The killing of 22-year-old Gina Amini have led to protests all over Rosalat and in recent days also in the rest of Iran. Many have been killed and thousands have been jailed. But what is really going on down there and which are the consequences? Will the Kurdish military intervene and will we see foreign support from other countries outside of Iran? Let's go through all of this, but before we start, as usual, don't forget to like this video, comment your opinion down below, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you don't miss any further videos on this channel. As Gina Amini was killed by the Iranian morale police in 16th of September 2022, large protests were formed, starting in Rosh Halat and extending its presence into other places of Iran. For a more in-depth video about the protest's background, check out our most recent video called Will the death of 22-year-old Gina Amini start the Rosh Halat revolution? Now, what has happened since then? Most recent number shows that over 20 persons have been killed in Rosh Halat only since the protest started. This is a constantly increasing number, so as you are watching this, it is most likely that the number have grown and grown until another number much higher than the 20 that we talk about right here. So what is happening inside and outside of Rosh Halat? Let's go to the city of Tabriz where we've actually seen tons of protests going on in the city. The city is located just outside of Rosh Halat and have seen how the civilians have been taken, tear gas treatment from the police, mass arrest and abusement and of course a lot of sharpshooting against protesting unarmed civilians. Despite all of this, Tabriz stands as one of the strongest places of the revolution yet and the protests are still ongoing. Going on to the Rojhalati cities, we see how the Rojhalat part of Iran have been the most strongest and successful one in the revolution until now. This have been seen in how the Kurds actually have been able to liberate at least one city and people are talking about Shnu being this city where the Iranian police and military have been completely driven out of the city and recent reports also claim that the city of Sina, officially known as the city of Sanandaj, also have been able to liberate some places, some districts by the Kurds against the Iranian guards and police and military. Protests are still going on in cities like Mahabad, Urmia, Zerdesht, Saqez, Bane, Mariwan and Kermanshan. Iran even shut down internet completely in order to take away the protest ability to spread around between themselves. However, this has resulted in foreign help as Elon Musk have activated Starlink in order to help the civilians there to reach out easier to the world wide stage and also to be able to contact each other more easily. Now the Iranian people seem to have access to internet much easier than before. One thing that is very different from previous protests throughout the years before is of how much the international area actually talks about this situation. It has actually got a lot of attention in media and also Kurds from other parts of Kurdistan have shown their support to the Kurdish cause, to the Rosh Halati cause. For example, the HDP leader Salahatin Demirtaj who have actually through his lawyer released a picture where he have shown his support for the Rosh Halati cause by shaving all of his hair. Now this kind of attention is missing from some parts of the Kurdish community still. It can be much better of course and these parts have actually got tons of criticism by the Rosh Halati communities who say that they expected much more from the Kurds of other parts of Kurdistan. 
In the diaspora, though, Kurds have been very, very organized and been able to organize, you know, manifestations, demonstrations and tons of other activities in order to highlight the Kurdish cause in Rosh Halat, but also to show how their struggle also is in the Rosh Halati struggle. One of the most recent claims is that the people, the civilians in Rosh Halat have wished for the KDPY, the PJAK, the Komala forces to actually come to the cities and organize themselves. This possible scenario has also gotten some criticism as people claim that this would only give the Iranian army legitimacy to actually attack Kurdistan and give the Kurds another of their genocides or their mass killings as we've seen throughout the history before. We will talk a little bit more about this scenario later on in the video. First, I want to introduce one of our guests for this video. We got Hajir with us in this video who will comment on the situation that is right now in Rosh Halat in his hometown of Zerdesht. Let's get into it. All right, so uh, we got our guest here with us, Hajir Shem. Hajir, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much. Everyone have followed what is going on in Rosh Halat and in Iran, the protest that is, has been started after the killing of Gina Amini. And mm. I want to ask you some, some questions about that. You're yourself from Rosh Halat. Um, yes. What have you heard from the latest reports uh, about what's going on down there? Uh, what is the newest uh, information, you know? The newest information I know is that um, <clears throat> the police of Iran, the Basij and uh, the moral police and th their armies are attacking Kurdish cities, especially Kurdish cities. Uh, and we can see a development that hasn't happened before in uh, the Islamic uh, rule, the Islamic time of ruling uh, since Shah. And that is that all cities are demonstrating, uh, people going to the streets, uh, women are, are in the front. But in Rojalat, in my city, Serdesh, where I'm from, uh, the police have entered with tanks and shooting live bullets at protesters, demonstrators, uh, and uh, there is no one to help them there. Uh, but the latest reports today was that one general from, a general from intelligence, of Iran was killed in my city, Sardesh, and uh, that's a hu huge development. Uh, and uh, the the Iran is talking about uh, it's the Hizbi Democratic Kurdistan that Peshmerga who did it. They're retaliating and they're turning the attention of Rojalat and Iran to towards Iraq and uh, Koya, as we saw today, the bombing. What would you say is the main goal uh, from the protest? Like, is it a national uh, patriotic goal behind it, or is it just about human rights and and uh, and the rights of women uh, having their human basic human rights? What what do you think is the goal behind the protests? I think the Iranian people are tired because uh, Iran is a, a rich country, a very rich country. Uh, and the people are tired that everything Iran, all Iran's economy going to Yemen, Syria, Iraq, and their uh, proxy armies like uh, the Houthis and all of the above to counter US and Israel. So they're using a lot of uh, economy to keep this going, these armies, and the, the people are tired because they're getting starved. The women can't go out. F f in freedom, they have to cover their faces. Uh, the Kurds are tired. Um, yeah, the people are tired. They want to change. They want to be like, they want to have freedom. We, we've seen in recent year, especially, that demonstrations and protests is becoming a more regular, on a more regular basis in Iran and in Rojalat. Uh, would you say there is any difference from previous uh, demonstrations and this one or, or or is it something that is this different this time what would you say about that i think iran is using extensive force when you use force to quiet the people the people will escalate every time uh, first time 
demonstrators. We have seen it before. Uh, it was like one, two days. Iran arrested a lot of people, humiliated them, killed a lot, a lot of people. That's extensive force. That's a lot of force. And when you do that, you just make the you make the people more angry. Um, so next time, demonstrators, they will, they will, the, demonstra the demonstration will be much uh, more uh, aggressive than before. So uh, this is different because uh, it's hold on for so long. Uh, people thought it would be quiet after a day or two, but it has continued. People are still going out on the streets. Uh, intelligence are getting uh, attacked in Iran from the Iranian side. So uh, Iran are scared right now. I think so, yes. It's different. When we talk about these demonstrations, we see that there is civilians demonstrating. Do we know anything about Peshmerga, KDPY, or, or you know, Komala, or, or PJAC, or anything? Are, are, do we have military force, or is it just civilians right now? It's very difficult for the Peshmerga to go inside Iran and take cities and uh, village, villages uh, uh, I think there's always some kind of uh, infiltration from Peshmergas inside the cities, uh, but uh, not like publicly uh, training up the civilians and uh, arming them and uh, to counterattack. Not like that. I don't think we have seen that yet. Uh, because <laughs> let's be honest, Iran is a huge nation. Iran has a huge military. Iran is uh, have a I don't know how many drones. Uh, we can't just go in and like this is Kurdistan. We have to back off. Iran will then get the satisfaction to send the arm armies, the drones, and destroy all of civilian life. So I don't think Peshmerga will uh, yet go in and like take over before they are armed and equipped and trained. Uh, this, the demonstration has to go a little bit further to for something like that to happen. At the moment, I don't think they will take that risk. What would uh, Rojhalat need right now? People are talking about you know, uh, support from the West, just like how uh, Rojava have been supported military by US uh, during the Syrian civil war. People are talking about a no-fly zone. Um, what would you say is the most important uh, action to protect Rosh Halat and, and, you know, to progress in this conflict? The first thing we need is all of us should unite. That's number one, but that won't be enough. The demonstration has to go beyond the Kur Kurdish borders. We have to get an uprising in Tehran. We need an uprising in uh, of the Persian cities in Baluch cities, we need them in Turkmen cities like uh, Tabriz. Uh, we need the uprisings to continue everywhere for Kurds to seize their moment, like in Rojava. Mm. And and uh, because I've heard uh, a few days ago that there was um, demonstrations in Tehran, and I heard just I think it was yesterday that uh, the Baluchis is the only one who have actually take up arms, uh, weapons and, and fought. Um, but is that not, uh, have, have, for example, in Tehran, have the situation calmed down now or what's the situation in other parts of Iran? It's escalating, mass arrests. The uh -huh. police of Iran are mass arresting pe people. Uh, they are intimidating them. They are torturing them. Uh, it's a very difficult right now. So... I don't know, these few days, if the people can hold on, if things can change in our favor. Okay. And my final question now, um, what can we accept, expect from the future? Will, which kind of scenario we will see? We will, are we going towards, you know, uh, that it becomes, that it, everything dies out? Or are we going towards an uh, actual revolution, uh, you know, in worst case, that we go into a civil war. What, what what can we expect right now? We can expect this to continue. The demonstration, it will never be as before. Never. Because they have used so much force. They have humili humiliated people. They have tortured people. We will never see Iran as before. 
the people will keep on uprising, the people will keep on uh, demonstrating. So we don't know if this time, next time, or the third time, but it will happen. The people won't be quiet anymore. On 28th of September 2022, Iran acted in what we can interpret as an unprovoked revenge attack as they attacked KDPY headquarters in Bashur. Even schools were targeted in the attack by Iran and according to the most trusted sources, 10 people have been killed and more than 50 people injured. Besides the tons of missiles that were used in the attack, Iran also used a suicide bomber in the attack towards the KDPUI headquarters in Bashur. Some claims that Iran have organized this attack as a revenge act since the Kurds have been the strongest part of the revolution yet this we can see in how they have liberated at least one maybe two cities in Rosh Halat. Furthermore, I found it also quite interesting to talk about the situation in eastern and southeastern Iran where the Baluchis live. The relationship between the Baluchi people and the Kurdish people is quite an interesting one and I might make a video about that. If you can give me 100 likes on this video, I'll make a video for you about the relationship between Baluchistan and Kurdistan. But what we can say about the Baluchis in this conflict is that Baluchis are the only one in all of Iran who have actually taken up arms against the Iranian regime. We've seen that in the recent news of clashes between the Iranian regime and the Baluchi forces, but also in statements that the Baluchis have made where they actually seem to encourage the Kurds to join their armed conflict with them. Here we see how a fellow Baluch writes on the wall, Jina of Kurdistan, in the heart of Baluchistan, the revolution has begun, let's make it a victory. We've also had this statement where the Baluchis in a statement says, We, the Baluch nation, are ready to defend and guard and show our brotherhood to the Kurdish nation. No matter when and how, we will protect them against the Islamic Republic. Long live Kurdistan, long live Baluchistan. The question remains, would an armed conflict in Rosh Halat benefit the Kurds or play against them? As Haji said in the interview, Iran has a great force, which is much stronger than the Kurdish fighters in Rosh Halat. The only chance the Kurds would have in this conflict would be in guerrilla warfare and not through open war, force against force especially not if we aren't supported by foreign powers. I have to agree with Hajir in this one. The best chance for the Kurds is to get to a situation where all of Iran is revolting against the regime because only then we will get into a situation which looks kind of like the Syrian civil war where the Rojava community were able to form their own autonomy without worrying about the central government. The same thing goes here if we can have a protest in all of Iran, we will probably be able to make the Kurds of Rosh Halat form their own autonomy in their own time. It is for sure a very complex situation and it is impossible to know what waits for us in the next day, but I would love to hear your opinion. So let me know in the comment section what you think about the future of this conflict. And also don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, make sure that you don't miss any further videos on this channel.